Uh, hey y'all yes yes today is the day bonjour welcome hello i know i seem a little bit excited today maybe it's just the brightness of this um <clears throat> sweat uh, it's like bringing sunshine into this room honey i wanted to come here today because i actually lately have found myself having this conversation with a couple of people Concerning this post that I had made a while back on my website, so what homework you need to do when you're getting ready to buy a, a car. And I am very devoted to this conversation because, baby, when I was younger, I was thinking I knew everything. I went and purchased a car by myself thinking I got, I got something for you guys at the dealership. Yes. They sent me packing with a car, and it was not the best financial situation that I could have ever put myself in um, because of my naiveness. So I want to actually come and let's, I want to teach you some things today, honey. I even got it written down because it's so good. It's so juicy. It's so juicy. Let me, let me sip on this. Oh, you know. So before I get started, let me just tell you guys, please, if you're already feeling my energy right now, which is today is so hype, please subscribe, guys. Please, if you're feeling this, this lets me know that you're interested so I can keep coming back and giving you more content. Now, if you have no patience, I'll tell you right now, this process of car buying with my techniques is probably not for you. You can go ahead, stop watching this video. But let, let's get to the conversation more than anything. I won't go too much into the details of what you need to do before you get to the dealership because I already wrote about that on my blog. So just go ahead, go to my website. Uh, and the reason why I'm bringing this video out now is because the best time you wanna buy a car, guys, is at the end of the year. The new cars for the new year are in. The old cars gotta go. Quotas have to be met. So this is where you, you, power baby so I'm gonna give you the tools but for you to win everybody still wins so you've done all your homework that I've told you to do now you're ready to go to the dealership and buy this car when you get to that dealership make sure you have your notes what I did when I was um, car shopping is I actually put my notes into my phone so when I'm checking my information they can't tell that I'm getting my life together here. Write the notes that I talk about for the homework that you have to do. Put those key notes into your phone so it's easy to access, it's always with you. When you get to the dealership, the first thing you're gonna see is happen is you haven't even stepped out of your car yet and here comes the salesman already running to catch you. <sighs> Over the years, I've hated that part. It's like, oh, I know they have a job to do. They got bills to pay, children to feed. No offense to you salesmen, I love you guys. I have no issues with y'all. But give me some room. Let me at least breathe the air of the dealership first. I mean, come on. I'm not saying to completely ignore me because if I don't feel like you even acknowledge my existence, then you don't need my money or my services. But just allow me a good, just give me five minutes. Just give me five, five, five minutes. So salesmen, take that note, please. You get there, if you feel it's too soon, you're not ready to talk to them just yet, say, hey, I'm just looking, but give me a card. And when I'm ready or I have a couple of questions, I'll come looking specifically for you. At least have that loyalty to that salesman that did approach you first. You don't want to go to the dealership blindly. You want to go there knowing there's a specific car or two, maybe three, that you want to go and look at. It is make sure that you've narrowed down the brand of the car you're looking for down to two because there's so many cars out there. You don't want to get lost and distracted. I have called in before when I've had my list of cars that I want to look at and called the dealership prior to and say, hey, I saw a car online. Do you guys still have it? That's good and bad. It's good in the sense of now you know what dealerships have the cars you want so you're not driving around and you get there and they don't have it. But then sometimes some salesmen pull the stunts where they tell you, yeah, the car is here. And then you get there, you guys start looking for it. He knows it wasn't there and he tries to sell you a different one. So be mindful of that. Be ready for that. But you may end up finding another car in the same brand of what you're looking for that's even better. Once you have looked around, 
and you see one that you're really serious about, it was probably the one you saw online that you're like, yes, oh, come to mama. Um, and you see that one, you really now want to test drive it. Go to the salesman and say, okay, can you go ahead and get me the keys? They'll of course ask for your ID, um, so be ready to give that up to them. Make sure you don't forget it when you leave. And you, I want you to take that moment when they bring you the keys to the car to really inspect the vehicle inside it out. Look for scratches, look for tire issues, look, you know, um, pop the hood, pop the trunk. You may not have to be a mechanic, but when something is not right and it's obvious, it's obvious. And point it out. Now, during this time when you're inspecting the vehicle before you actually drive it, that's when, of course, the salesman is going to want to try to ask you all these questions. It doesn't matter if you're financing, if you're buying cash, it's still money. So they don't need to know where the money's coming from until we actually have a deal. When we have an actual deal, we can talk money. That's one of the lines I used once when the salesman was pressuring me so hard. It don't matter. We can talk money when I know I have a deal and we don't have a deal yet because I don't have a car that I like. You're going to have to be strong. It's a business, honey. Look at it as a business deal because it will save you money if you do these key points of things that I'm telling you to do when you're there. Um, so once you're looking at the car, you're checking it out, or put up the speakers, turn the AC on high, you know, all these different things. Push buttons because listen, this is potentially your car. So I need you to make sure you've tried everything because if something is, ends up being wrong and you still want to buy it, you can always use that perfect time to get them to fix it without having to fully pay for it. Hmm. So inspect that car. And during that time, he's still gonna try to, he or she's still gonna try to talk to you and pull information from you. Just be like, ma'am, sir, give me a moment. And they'll try to keep you there all day so you don't have time to go to other dealerships, the car shop. And if you're trying to be productive and you really need a car, um, and you know your patience is not that long, you don't wanna waste too much time at a dealership. So get in there, get what you need to get, and get out. When you're test driving it, Really test drive it. Have them, ask them, is there an off-road where you can speed up, push brakes, make uh, full U-turns, whatever it is. And they'll direct you. They always have a little spot where you can do that. And during that drive, once again, I'm telling you, they're going to keep trying to have these conversations with you to pull in, oh, how many kids do you have? What do you do? You know, uh, how, much, how much are you looking to spend? They'll try to throw stuff in there to get information out of you. Stay firm keep it simple Just find ways to brush it off but focus on the car sometimes they tend to do that if they know the car has a particular problem or glitch to distract you from catching that problem I'm not trying to make salesmen sound like bad people you know they've created a system to find ways to sell cars and there's nothing wrong with that because at the end of the day too it is still your responsibility to make sure you're getting what you're paying for what you've done to test drive you and let's say you're like me when I was getting my car, I'm sitting there, and don't show your excitement. Hold your composure. Just... But inside, you're like, eh, yes, this is it. I got to have this car. I can't wait to get this car. Don't let them see that. Just stay in your steering wheel. Mm, I've driven better. We'll see. I don't know. And you want to get excited, but you don't want to get too excited because if the deal ends up not happening, that you want you want to be it's very important to be able to walk away because most of the time when I thought I really wanted something but it wasn't working out the way I wanted to on that particular purchase and I walked away I ended up with an even better vehicle if you are ready to negotiate and this is the car that you want let's start negotiations and here's the tricks and tips that I will give you when it comes to that when you're making your offer you're obviously making it off of the notes that you have taken and from all of that, you're going to come up with a number. Now, what that number needs to be, it needs to be that number that you're going to call out the door. Out the door means, or as abbreviated OTD, is the final number. When you have the price of the car, you have the taxes that they're going to um, put on the car, you have the dealership fees, I hate paying dealership fees uh, for that car, you have tag title all of that when all of that is added up you have a final number that final number is your out the door number what most people that are not 
used to car buying or new to it do they negotiate just the price of the car but then of course later on you start adding all this other stuff on and you realize that oh that's still not where I was trying to be so I learned through my experiences trial and error that when I'm negotiating the number I'm gonna give that salesman is my final number when you're giving them that number, they're going to bring you the specs of the car. They're going to have their sales paperwork showing you all the costs, this, that, and this. Don't even worry about that. And I go straight to the bottom of that paperwork. I tell them, give me a moment, please. I go back into my phone, do my little research, go back into Kelly Blue Book, put the specs of this car that I'm just looking at. See what Kelly Blue Book or Edmunds or any other car value website says. And I put those specs in and I come up with a value for that car. Let's say they say the value of the car is $27,000. I'm going to start my offer at $24,000 out the door. So you want to make sure that when you're giving your final number, the number that you're going to end up paying for this car, cash or finance, doesn't matter, is a number that's in line with the car as well, overall. If there's some things you want them to add, like you want them to tint the windows, you can always write it on the paper too. Please include or include. It. They can always say no. You know, say add lifetime oil changes, or year, uh, one year of free tire rotations. You can write that down and then put your number and make sure you put at the end of your number OTD in all caps and circle it and initial it. When you do that, you let them come in. I usually turn the paper downwards for them. So they don't see when they walk in, I push the paper towards them and like, here you go. Here's my number. And let them look at it. And most of the time they laugh. And they're like, oh no, this won't work. Oh no. And then here's what you do. Okay, well, thank you. It was nice. I have your card. If you change your mind, you let me know. If I change my mind, I'll let you know. And watch what happens. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me see. Let me go talk my manager you know I can't make any promises but let me see what I can do now you already know what your max is hopefully you've come in with the max you know what your budget is stick to it don't get crazy guys number one it's just a car it's not like a home that builds equity it depreciates in value so don't don't overdo it okay there's plenty of other cars out there and you're gonna change it maybe another five six years anyways because then you don't want to buy it and hate it because you can't afford it. I've walked away several times and they've called me back. I thought my offer was funny to you. Oh, it's not funny now? Oh, something changed? You need to sell, right? I'll make a counter offer. My counter offer will probably be an extra $1,500 or an extra two grand. You want to give an offer that gives you enough room to do a nice jump to, sh to make them feel good. Like I said, don't let them bully you. They're still going to be asking, well, you know, this offer you're making, are you financing or are you buying cash? We can talk money when my offer has been accepted. And stick to that. Trust me. You want to hold some things back. And one thing you want to hold back all the way to the end is how you're paying for this car. Because it doesn't matter how you're paying for it if they can't agree to a number that you want to pay for it. And at the end of the day, you're paying for it. They're not paying for it for you. They're not buying it and paying the bill for you every month. They don't want to get your number to where you want to be. Walk away. Trust me. They'll come calling. And if that all goes well, honey, congratulations. Honey. You have a car. Can I get a ride? Please. <laughs> this process, like I told you, is going to be a very long process it feels long but it goes by really fast but overall it's gonna feel so good when you're sitting in your car and you're driving off and you just keep looking at your vehicle and when you park it and you're pressing the alarm you always look back at her hey girl you know or he and you want to be happy with your purchase and you want to feel good about it I've now mastered car buying to the point that right now I have a good deal on my car that I owe less than what it's worth. So if it were to be a total loss today by my insurance, they're gonna write me a check and I'm gonna have a difference after I pay off my loan that I can now take to put a down payment on something else. Make sure you're the one leaving winning more than they are because they'll be okay, but you won't. I don't want you to let these dealerships drive you 
to debt, okay? Please. I've made the mistake once. I made sure not to make it again. And I've definitely helped a lot of friends, family to not do the same mistake I made. And they're very happy with their purchases. And I hope my tips have taught you quite a bit about this car buying process. I know there's probably a whole lot of questions that you may have, so please do not hesitate to leave your comments below and ask me and I will answer them. I really wish you guys the best if you're going on this car buying journey. Please have some patience. I'm telling you it's gonna be worth it and it's gonna save you a lot of money. Don't short yourself, get what you like. You work hard, you deserve it. It is time. Let's end it here. Uh, I'll be back again with some kind of new information or just a simple conversation. I look forward to seeing you again. So if you like what you saw here today, aside from what I told you at the beginning to subscribe, please do share this with a friend. Hit the thumbs up button. You guys, listen, I'm learning to live, so let's learn this thing together. Until next time, please love yourself first and peace out. So hang in there, folks. Make it happen. I love car buying. It's my favorite thing now. If people would pay me to go and negotiate for them, I would do it. Because now it's like a fun thing for me to negotiate these car deals. I just love it. <laughs> I really do. It's become a fun thing for me nowadays. But I'll, let me just stop it here, okay?